us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins? Stand up and tell them all I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. justice rescue me and deliver me incline your ear to me and save me shall declare your justice day by day your salvation O oh God you have taught me from my youth and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds A reading from the first letter of St. Paul 
to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native town the things that we have, done, we have heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his home place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the day of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. But it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. 
When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through their midst and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Well, I've been getting questions here on AFC Championship Day. First time in 33 years, they say, Father, so when you're saying Mass for the Bengals, is it okay to pray that they win? I say, I tell them what I tell you now. Guys, I, as your chaplain, I'm just in sales. I'm not in management. Okay. But I will show you my secret weapon for them, that would be my official Bengals rosary. <laughs> All right, who day? It's a beautiful coincidence, isn't it? There's never coincidences with God, they're God incidents. These readings for today are all about trusting God's design, trusting God's plan. Trusting that God has, as we pray each and every Mass for the other 51 weeks of the year, Father, you have created us for what? Some definite purpose. Comma, we pray. Give us the grace to know the path you've planned for us in this life and to respond with a generous yes. That is the great loving, our second reading, the loving knowledge that God wants to gift us with. You have a purpose. There are developmental theorists now who teach counter-culturally now that embedded in each and every human being is the seed of the person we're meant to become. It's called the acorn theory of development of ego and personality, Dr. James Hillman. And our life is these moments when we, in experience, wake up to who we're meant to be, a relationship, an experience, an encounter, an emotion, when we say, this is what I was created to do and be. Because there is a purpose. And God wants us to know what that is. I can remember like it was yesterday, back when I was a freshman in high school in a year I will not name right now. <laughs> because anyone under 40 years of age will have no idea what I'm talking about. It was during a thing called Watergate. I came back from summer Boy Scout canoe trip to the Boundary Waters out of communications with my family and the culture for those two weeks to find my family and much of the nation glued to the narrative unfolding in Washington, D.C., the Senate's investigation of possible presidential crimes. My dad said, son, you gotta sit down and watch this. This, this is the first time this has ever happened in our nation's history. And so I watched, and I will never forget the personality and the confidence and the swagger of the chair of that Senate Watergate Commission, one senator from North Carolina, you may remember him, old people like me, Sam Irvin. You may remember Sam Irvin? Homespun North Carolina boy who worked hard all the way through Harvard Law. And there on the eve of those investigations, the entire media apparatus of the country was riveted on the chair. And they said, Mr. Chairman, you have a lot on your shoulders today. Are you ready for this trial? He said, son, my life has prepared me for this moment. Yeah, I'm ready. That made an impression on me. I said, wow, that guy knows why he's here, who he is, 
where he comes from and what he's doing. Sam Irvin was a practicing Christian. He knew this first reading, cold. Before you were born, Isaiah says. Before you were even on this earth, I, he, created us. Before you were in your mother's imagination or your parents' world, I dedicated you, Prophet Jeremiah says. I appointed you, he says in the first reading. This is the seed bed, as we call it, acorn theory. Seed, bed, heart, identity of our vocations prayer. Give us the grace to know the path you've created for us and then we can have knowledge that gives us humility, confidence, strength, power, self-control that the world can never give. The key is to allow that grace of God's special purpose for you to flow through us to everyone else around us that God puts us in relationship with. As the prophet Isaiah said, it is for the nations that I appointed you, that I created you, that I knit you together, that I designed you, so that your purpose in life can be for what the, is, the Jews called the healing of the world through our God-given gifts of intellect, will, our mercy, our love, our forgiveness, our perseverance, our dedication, our willingness to start over again in life. That's meant to be given by you, through you, for the world. That, that's a lifetime of preparation. But my brothers and sisters out there in the world, this is increasingly a cognitive minority, as Pope Benedict XVI called the Christian faith now in 21st century America. Increasingly, we are being told that there is no purpose. We come from nowhere. We're just random molecules and particles. Not only is there no purpose for your life, but there can be no purpose for your life. There was never a purpose for your life. Not so those in the biblical worldview, like Sam Irvin, like us here today, before you were even here, there was a design for you. Brothers and sisters, that prepares us for Jesus' first sermon, his first homily in Luke chapter 4. He goes back, we're meant to see, and he quotes Jeremiah. He quotes Isaiah. I have come to liberate, to heal, to reconcile, quoting the prophets. And then with this angular exacting sentence, today he says this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He knew his purpose, his creation, his identity that was given to him by his father. We're meant to see the connection here, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the father, Jesus, this, he says, this is who I am. I am the Messiah. And we're meant to see how the different gospel writers recorded this first homily. Luke has a positive reaction from the assembly. All spoke highly of him. All were amazed at the gracious words that came forth from his mouth. Not so the gospel of Mark. They were outraged. Who does he think he is, they said. Who is this man who claims to be the Messiah? Who is this blasphemer? And we are meant to see why, by contrast, the people in Luke's gospel were so happy at this. Because he was from their hometown. Only Luke records this detail. And every detail matters in your life, in your hearing, in God's plan. Isn't that Joseph's son, they said? And brothers and sisters, we're meant to reflect 
That's the human person using religion for their own means, for their own plans, their own agenda, their own outcomes. They thought it was a local boy. It was somebody from their village, their tribe, who indeed was the long prophesied Messiah for Israel. They now had a friend in high places. Maybe he can do something for us here in our little world of Nazareth. Which is why Jesus then goes on to clearly undercut and undermine that reading of who he is. He goes on and quotes two obscure to us stories that would have been very known to the people of Nazareth. He goes on to show them that yes, he is the Messiah, but the Messiah is meant not just for a particular local narrow agenda group of people, but for the world, as Jeremiah said, for the healing of the world. And so Jesus goes on to tell the story of Elijah, as if to say to his locals, do you not remember the story of Elijah? Do you not remember who God sent Elijah to speak to and to help? It was a woman not from Israel, from Sidon, from outside the boundaries, the known boundaries of that religious world, and then blessed her with the flour and oil and resources and bread, prefiguring Jesus at the mass that never runs out not to someone from Israel. And then to make it crystal clear, he goes on a second time to say, do you not remember who Elijah, Elijah's successor, healed? It was a general in the Syrian army, a sworn enemy of the people of Israel. In hearing that, that the Messiah was intended not just for their own local use, but for the healing of the nations, even the enemies of Israel, then Luke wants us to see, then the congregation got furious. And they drove him out of the town, and they tried to hurl him headlong. Jeremiah, I have appointed you. Jesus, yes. That is who I am, but it's not for your personal, private benefit. We all have a tendency to read religion that way, folks, to make it transactional. What is he doing for me today? If I just live a good life, if I check the boxes, if I go to Mass, if I receive my sacraments, if I try to be a good person, surely he will notice that and give me the things that I want. I think of the song of how dizzy we get, disoriented we get, when we make it our ego, God to bless that, the song Vertigo by U2, give me what I want and nobody gets hurt. That's ego. Brothers and sisters, God's identity and plan and vocation for us is meant to be given away in generosity, in acts of sacrifice and perseverance to become a gift for others. Tikkum olam in Hebrew, the healing of the world through your intellect, your graces, your education, your preparation, a lifetime of preparation. Yes, I'm ready for this. That's what I told the guys last night. Before you were born, God prepared you, Bengals, for this three o'clock game at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. God knew before you were a thought in your mother's eyes that you would be walking into that, embracing the definite purpose. That's the love, that's the gift. That's what we are invited to be and to do, to become a channel of grace, not for our tight little dizzy vertigo ambitions, but for the world. Lord, help us know the path you have created for us so we can say a definite yes and become a gift 
as was Jesus, for the healing of the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's profess our faith in our loving Father. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe one Lord. Let's bring before the Lord our hopes and desires as may be best for us, our families, and our nation. For the church, may the Lord bless her efforts to send out missionary disciples ready to share God's goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the word of God penetrate their hearts and direct their feet along the path of righteousness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in need of forgiveness, reconciliation, or healing, may the Lord call them to repentance and bless them with healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the Holy Spirit help us to see and truly know the great plans the Lord has for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, marked with the cross of faith. May they feast with the angels and saints in the presence of God the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Vincent Frere Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us trust in your plan for our lives as we pray our vocations prayer. Almighty, Almighty Father, Father. You have created us for some definite purpose. Grant us the grace to know the path you have planned for us in this life and to respond with a generous yes. Make our archdiocese, parishes, homes, and hearts fruitful ground for your gift of vocations. May our young people respond to your call with courage and zeal. Stir among our men a desire and the strength to be good and holy priests. Bless us with consecrated religious and those called to a chaste single life, permanent deacons and faithful husbands and wives, who are a sign of Christ's love for his church. We commend our prayer for vocations to you, Father, through the intercession of Mary, our mother, and the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
I speak with the tongues of the living and of angels, but speak without love. I am only brass without song and empty noise on the Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and O Lord, our God, you established these created things to sustain us in our frailty. Grant, we pray, that they may become for us the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of God's peace. Peace, Josh. Peace, buddy. Thanks for serving. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders, for he satisfies the thirsty soul. The hungry he will fill with good things. Our hymn for the communion procession is number 353, body One Love Released, number 353. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
and let us pray. O oh God, you have willed that we partake in the one bread and the one chalice. Grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the healing of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the mission of Catholic education to tell us more about this great ministry of St. Vincent Ferrer School. Let's call now upon our principal, Mickey Dunkley, to share about this mission. Please take a seat. Good morning. My name is Mickey Dunkley. I'm the principal of St. Vincent Ferrer School. My husband Mark and I have been parishioners here for 27 years, and all four of our children attended SVF school as well. As we begin Catholic Schools Week, I would like to take a moment and thank the entire St. Vincent Fair Parish for your support of our parish school. On behalf of our school staff, we wish to express to you our sincere gratitude for the support that we receive that allows us to carry on the important ministry of Catholic education here at St. Vincent Fair. As principal of our parish school, I continue to be awestruck by the amazing things that we are able to do at school each day. I am especially impressed with our talented teachers and staff members and their selfless contributions to our students and their families. These past two years of educating children in a pandemic has been a challenge that we could have never imagined. And yet, our staff has adapted to the many changes, and as a result, our students are thriving. It's not an overstatement when I say to you that our teachers are truly the best. It is true that much has changed in the year since my children, and perhaps many of your own, attended SVF. We continue to be a vibrant school community that is making a difference in the lives of our students and in the community. I'd like to share with you a few facts about our school. We have 158 students in grades pre-K through eight. Our students come to us from 27 different zip codes. This creates a beautifully diverse community that spans a wide array of socioeconomic and cultural backgrounds and gives our students a wider worldview that prepares them as they enter high school. In the last three years, 83% of our eighth graders have chosen to attend a local Catholic high school. Families have a wide array of reasons for choosing our school. Many are parishioners at SVF or other Catholic churches that do not have schools. Others reside in failing districts and they participate in Ohio's Ed Choice voucher program. Many are from local communities, but others travel across the city and choose SVF because it is close to their workplace. The common thread that unites them all is their commitment to providing a high quality, faith-based education for their children. Our preschool program, which is now in its fifth year, has been a true benefit to our school and a wonderful extension of our educational ministry. When the program was launched five years ago, we had two goals, to provide a high quality Catholic preschool education and to boost our kindergarten enrollment. Over these past five years, 60% of our pre-K students have gone on to enroll in our kindergarten class, with a few additional students electing to do an additional year of pre-K to further prepare for kindergarten. I would like to share some other positive changes that have taken place over the past few years that have benefited our students and staff. The first is that we have been able to add a full-time counselor to our school staff. As I'm sure you've heard, mental health needs for children and adolescents have dramatically increased in the past several years, but especially in the past two years. It's been a true blessing to have a counselor working with our students, whether it's on a one-to-one -one basis, working with classes of so students in social emotional learning, or acting as a resource to parents and teachers in regard to the overall wellness of their students. Typically, a school of our size doesn't have a school counselor at all but we are blessed to have one, not just as a counselor, but five days a week, thanks to state and federal funding, along with the support of our parish to provide this resource to our students and families. I think it speaks well to our whole child approach that we so value at SVF. 
Additionally, we've been able to increase our technology program over the last couple of years. Thanks to some very generous donations from some of our parishioners to our school, combined with COVID relief funds, we have added a laptop program that allows our students in grades K through eight to have one-to-one -one access to laptops. We have also added clever touch display panels in each classroom, which is an amazing tool for our teachers to maximize their instruction. While it is true that not all of our students are Catholic, all of our students participate in our religion classes. Faith formation is the foundation of our education, and it's integrated into all we do. In the past five years, eight of our students have been baptized and welcomed into the Catholic faith. As a school, we participate in numerous service projects as a part of our understanding of social justice. For example, this week, our students will be creating blessing bags to provide necessities to the homeless through St. Vincent de Paul. This type of witnessing to Christ shines as an example to our greater community. I could go on for hours about all the amazing things we do at our school. The pride that I have in our students and our staff knows no bounds. But instead of me telling you, I would prefer that you come to our open house at 1230 today and see what our school has to offer. Walk the halls, look at our students' work, talk to our parents and staff and hear what they have to say about your parish school. Furthermore, I invite you to be a part of our success as a school community. Help us spread the word about our school. Tell your family members and your neighbors about our small but mighty school community. Maybe you feel compelled to do more. As a school, we are committed to making sure that no student is turned away from SVF due to financial need. Perhaps you'd like to prayerfully consider supporting our school financially through donations to our tuition assistance fund, or by no donating to the school's general fund, or even to a specific project. And of course, we always welcome safe parish trained volunteers to work in our school with students. While most of our volunteers are school parents, we have many volunteers that serve our school that do not have children at our school, but simply want to contribute to our success. And I also want to take a moment to extend an invitation to all of you next Sunday to our dine out, which is going to take place at Ferrari's Little Italy. Um, Sunday and Monday, and a portion of the proceeds from that go to our school as well. We have thank you cards that will be handed out by some of our students at the back doors today. Whether you're getting a card from a pre-kindergartner that's a very, very simple and colored, or whether you're getting one from an eighth grader with a heartfelt expression, please know that it comes from a place of love and gratitude. Again, thank you for your time today, and as always, thank you for supporting St. Vincent Ferris School. Thank you, Mickey, for your ministry of integrating faith into our school ministry. Let's stand now for our dismissal. Let's make it a great and beautiful Who Day Memory Day today. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional is number 562, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, number 562.